Hey guys and gals, what's up? This is Gimli1357 here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get the Prominent Player Achievement in Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition on Xbox and PC. Now this achievement is to beat the AI in a 1v1 skirmish on Extreme Difficulty, which is the highest difficulty. And if you're not that great at RTSs like me, it is very difficult to do, unless you kind of find a cheap, cheesy way to do it, like I did. Uh, first off, in the main menu, you're going to want to select single player, skirmish, and then you're going to set up the game. So first thing, make sure the second player is set to an AI. You can choose e any of them. I just chose the default. You can choose your colors. Make sure you're both on separate teams. And then the uh, Ethiopians is the civilization that I chose for the AI. You can choose any of them as long as it's not one that's great at boats. Like you don't want to choose Vikings. Uh, you'll see why soon. And then you can choose any civilization for yourself. Press Y to open up the match settings. And you're going to set your location to islands. Islands is the important thing. This is why we don't want them to be great with boats. Uh, you could choose just plain islands or you can scroll all the way down to team islands. It won't really make a difference when you're doing a 1v1, but yeah, just pick either one of those. It'll just kind of affect the size and layout of the islands. Yeah, you'll do that and then the rest of these uh, can be the same. Normal for the size, reveals, all the same. Make sure difficulty is on extreme. Uh, game speed can be anything you want. Fast will just make the match go quicker. The important parts are population 25, resources ultra high or infinite, and starting age is imperial age or post imperial age. The reason I didn't go with infinite and post imperial is just because I like actually having something to do while the match happens. Because it takes eh, about a 20 minutes. Yeah, that's it. All the rest of the settings are left at the same. It'll tell you about poor performance. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Then you'll start the match. Once it starts, I'm going to take my scout and just have him start looking around the island so I can actually see what is all around me. Uh, it'll be important. And then have your four villagers immediately start making houses so that you want to build four houses to bring your population capacity up to 25, which is the max that we set for this match. After they do that, you're going to have them start building a bunch of castles. You can hold down left trigger to make them uh, queue up buildings. As soon as they finish a house, go ahead and start queuing villagers in your town center to uh, have more villagers to do. Uh, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to make these four a control group, which I don't really use much in this match. But it can be useful if you hold left bumper and then you can press any of these directions. You can set up a control group to easily select villagers later. Anyway, the first villager that pops out of the town center, I'm going to have start constructing a wonder. That's right, we're going for a wonder victory. Then I select the town center, left trigger X over the blueprint for the wonder, and that'll make sure all the new villagers that come out start building the wonder. And, uh, yeah. That means a whole bunch of villagers working on it. It'll go quicker. The rest of them are still working on the castle. As soon as the first castle is done, you're going to want to... Um, Research spies and hoarding so that you have a stronger defense for your buildings, mostly the castles, and so that you can actually see what the enemy is doing. Then I just start laying around a few more blueprints for castles. You want to kind of surround your town center and wonder with castles. Now, if you don't have infinite resources, it also would be a good idea to start building some mining camps, mostly near stone. As you can see, we're already pretty low on stone because of all the castles that we built. And then I grab a couple villagers off of the wonder to build a university and not a blacksmith, a market. Markets uh, are also important if you don't have infinite resources and then I do a blacksmith anyway. But markets are important if you don't have infinite resources so that you can buy more stone, mostly stone. Stone's gonna be the thing that we're low on. Then I throw around just a couple other buildings cause mm, why not build the economy, boost those stats. Throw both dock, why not? Then, uh, yeah, your villagers will just kind of get to work. And you can start upgrading things at the university, like stronger buildings and things like that. Make sure your town center is queued entirely to build as many villagers as possible. Right there, I went down to the enemy town center, held left trigger, and clicked in on the right thumbstick. That will set a custom camera snap point. So if you hold left trigger and you flick the right thumbstick, 
you can snap back and forth between different areas. So it makes it really easy to quickly check what the enemy is doing and then what I'm doing. And I'm just making sure researching stuff is done while I build my castles. And you can see the enemy already showed up with a boat with siege units. So you can use your villagers against siege units. They are great against them because siege units are not great against infantry. And that's basically where your villagers are. So take out the battering ram and trebuchet that they attacked me with. And they almost destroyed one of my castles, which would have been unfortunate. But I have my villagers go and repair that real quick. And there's a boat down there. Attacking and killing my villagers. You can see I already, I already have dead villagers, so queue up a few more in the town center whenever your villagers die. And just have them keep working on the wonder and castles. The wonder is one of the most important things, because the faster you get that wonder done, the faster you will win the match. But you also want to make sure you have plenty of defenses around. So, I have to keep going over here. And I don't want to take all the villagers off of the wonder so that it keeps going. Destroy the battering ramp. Now, the cannon guys are kind of scary. You can see that one cannon killed or almost killed a lot of my villagers so yeah you can uh, hold left trigger and press X to have them go into a castle where they can hide and it'll give the castle extra arrows then it'll also heal them up a little bit which I later built a monastery thinking I didn't have an upgrade but you get it if you start in the Imperial Age that makes units heal faster when they're inside buildings and as you can see yet again they're showing up with more siege units. I rung the bell that time to make, that'll just make your villagers go into buildings that are near them. Uh, but that wasn't actually helpful because of where the siege units went compared to my villagers. So I just had them get out and start stabbing the battering rams. Now these cannon guys, once again, attack and kill my villagers. So I have to get them out and then the castle killed the castle guy. Then this boat was shooting my scouts. I just made him finish looking at the rest of the island so that... Uh, I can see everything. I also built a castle a little closer to the water since that's where they keep dropping units off with their boats. So I figure if I can get to them quicker, it might be helpful. But they still dropped off more units. And so I go ahead and start destroying the battering ram. We also finished our wonder a little while ago. And, you know, things are going. Once your wonder is done, your, your whole thing now is just protect it. Just build castles, destroy siege units. And that's about it. Mine stone when you can if you don't have infinite resources. Now down here, my castle took out all the archers just fine, but the trebuchets are not good for it. So my villagers have to go down there and take care of the trebuchet. Once again, almost lost that castle. And then boats show up and start shooting, so I have to hide my villagers around the other side while they repair it. Now here's why we have the market. We can sell a bunch of stone to get a bunch of gold and then turn that gold into sell a bunch of wood to get gold and then make that gold into stone so we can build more castles all the castles i thought about putting one over there but they already dropped off units before i could even get close so i just have them stay inside this one castle there's the part where i was talking about where i thought about building a monastery but i actually don't even need it so my villagers go and destroy the siege units but you can see they brought a lot of those cannon guys this time which those are good against castles and my villagers so the AI, even on extreme, it's somewhat predictable. What you can do is hide them inside of a castle, wait for the castle, the cannon guys to get close, then get them out of your castle and just kind of, kind of lure them into your, into your castle's range. You want to like tell them to attack and then run away, and you can see they get close enough, and then the castle kills that one, and there's just one left, and he's just out of range of my castle. So I go down there, I'm like, oh, attack, and then he runs away, and then I run away, and I just tell my villagers to go up here, and yeah, there he goes. Right into the range of a castle. He's dead. Easy peasy. And then you can uh, finish repairing up all the castles that they damaged and get more stone to do so, and make more villagers to replace the ones that were murdered. And then, uh, yeah, I built another castle down by the boat dock that I just built, because why not? Uh, there's the part where I was looking at the monastery and I realized that I already have the upgrade that makes them heal faster when they're inside buildings. Uh, now that everything's done, I just kind of have them start mining. You want you want to prioritize stone and then gold after that so that you can buy stone, basically, is really all it is. And yeah, a little something to do during the match and then uh, that's about it. Our wonder's pretty much completed it's three years it's almost there we're almost there and five more years to go uh i start building a boat at the boat dock but it's way too late for that 
it's not even going to be done in time because we have just two more years, one more year, and there it is. Victorious on extreme in a 1v1 against the AI. So you'll hit leave map, it'll take you to the stats page, and then... Ding! There it is. Prominent player for 20 gamer score. You beat an AI opponent on extreme in a 1v1 game. Good job, 20 gamer score, rare achievement. Now this doesn't give you the other achievements that are tied to difficulty, because there's achievements for beating AI in 1v1s on the other difficulties, hardest, hard, normal, uh, or moderate, standard, and peaceful. But you just have to play another match on each of those difficulties. This same strategy works on all of them, and you can grab those achievements in a couple hours. And that's it. Hope you all enjoyed this guide. Tune into Gamer's Guide and the Gamer's Guide channel Xbox Club for more achievement tips, shorts, and guides. See y'all later, folks.